In the heart of a charming town, surrounded by rolling hills and winding streams, I grew up far from the city's glitz and glamour. Our small, weathered house, with its creaky wooden floors and windows framing expansive fields, felt like its own world. It was here, in the simplicity and warmth of family love, that my story began. My parents, though not affluent, were rich in kindness and wisdom. My father, a local carpenter, had hands that were roughened by years of labor, but gentle in touch, crafting not just furniture, but also instilling in me the values of hard work and humility. My mother, a school teacher, filled our home with books and stories, weaving tales that sparked my imagination and nurtured my dreams. Life in our small town was unhurried and unpretentious. Neighbors greeted each other with familiarity, and community events were the highlights of our social calendar. I cherished this life, finding joy in the small pleasures, the fresh scent of earth after rain, the rustling of leaves underfoot, and the chorus of birds at dawn. It was at the local library where I first encountered Mark. He was unlike anyone I had known. A visitor from the city with an air of sophistication, yet an unassuming nature. His family was well known in the business circles, their wealth and influence reaching far beyond the city skyscrapers. But Mark, with his easy smile and genuine interest in my mundane tales, was a refreshing anomaly in that world. Our initial conversations were tentative like two worlds cautiously orbiting each other. He spoke of city life, the fast pace, the endless opportunities, and the dazzling lights. I shared stories of my town, the annual harvest festival, the serene walks by the stream, and the close-knit community. In those early days, we would often meet at the old park bench by the lake, our conversations stretching for hours. The lake with its placid waters reflecting the changing hues of the sky, bore witness to our growing connection, an invisible thread weaving our disparate worlds into one. Anna, Mark said to me one evening, his voice tinged with a vulnerability I had not seen before. I have always been surrounded by people who care more about wealth and status, but with you, I found a serenity that I didn't know existed. You've shown me a different way of life, one that's genuine and full of warmth. His words stirred something deep within me. Mark, where we come from doesn't define us. It's who we are when we're together that matters. You've brought a new perspective into my life, opening my eyes to dreams I never dared to have. As our relationship deepened, Mark confided in me about his family, particularly his mother, a woman of elegance but stringent expectations. He spoke of her with respect, yet there was an underlying concern in his words. She has her own ideas about who I should be with. I'm just worried about how she'll react to us. I reached out, taking his hand in mine, feeling the slight tremor. We'll face that together. I assured him. Love isn't about backgrounds or expectations. It's about two people who choose each other against all odds. The day Mark proposed was as unassuming as our love. No grand gestures, just a heartfelt promise of a life together. As I looked into his eyes brimming with hope and love, I knew this was just the beginning. The evening I was set to meet Mark's family, My nerves were on edge. The grandeur of their mansion loomed large as we approached, a stark reminder of the different worlds Mark and I came from. Mark held my hand, giving me a reassuring look. Just be yourself, Anna. That's all you need to be. I smiled weakly, trying to quell the rising anxiety. I just hope your mom doesn't think I'm out of place. Mark sighed a hint of concern in his eyes. Mom can be a bit much. Just remember, I'm here with you. As we entered the opulent dining room, Mark's mother, Marin, 
a statuesque woman with an air of austerity greeted us. Her eyes quickly took me in, a flicker of disapproval passing over her face. So, this is the young lady who's captured my son's heart. Interesting choice. Dinner was an elaborate affair, the table set with dishes I couldn't even name. Mark's mother, ever the gracious host, offered me a plate with a sly smile. I suppose these dishes might be a bit too sophisticated for your taste, Anna. We can get something simpler if you'd prefer. I felt a flush of embarrassment, but managed a polite decline. No, thank you. I'm always eager to try new things. As the evening progressed, her comments grew more pointed. She eyed my dress. A simple but neat outfit I had thought was appropriate. Is that what passes for evening wear in your town? It must be challenging to find good clothes on a modest budget. Mark jumped in, trying to steer the conversation elsewhere, but his mother was unrelenting. Tell me, Anna, what do your parents do? It's always fascinating to learn about different walks of life, I answered, feeling the weight of her judgment. My father is a carpenter, and my mother is a schoolteacher. Oh, how quaint, she replied, her voice dripping with condescendence. Hard-working people, I'm sure, but I suppose they couldn't offer you much in the way of a financial head start. The meal continued, with her taking jabs at my small-town upbringing, my parents' humble occupations, and even my salary, which she had somehow learned about. Each comment was veiled in politeness, but sharp enough to cut Mark was visibly uncomfortable, his attempts at defending me only seeming to amuse her more. As we left, Mark's father, Daniel, pulled me aside, offering a kind smile. Anna, you handle yourself well. Don't let her get to you. She'll come around. In the car, Mark apologized profusely. I'm so sorry, Anna. I didn't think she'd be this harsh. I sighed, a mix of hurt and determination in my voice. It's okay, Mark. I knew it wouldn't be easy, but I love you, and that's what matters. That night, as I lay in bed, the sting of his mother's words lingered, but beneath the hurt, a resolve was building. This was more than just about fitting in. It was a test of our love and my strength, and I was ready to face it head on. As the wedding day approached, the air was thick with excitement and unfortunately growing tension. Moran, who had taken it upon herself to oversee the preparations, seemed to find a peculiar pleasure in belittling my ideas and choices at every turn. One afternoon, while discussing the wedding plans with Mark and his mother, the topic of the wedding dress came up. I had chosen a simple yet elegant gown that I felt reflected my personality. Mark's mother, however, had other ideas. That dress, Anna. It's so plain. Don't you want to make a statement on your big day? After all, you're marrying into the family, she said, her voice laced with a patronizing tone. Mark squeezed my hand under the table, giving me a supportive look. Mom, Anna looks beautiful in that dress. It's her choice, and it's perfect but his mother was relentless. Oh, Mark, let's be realistic. This is a high-profile event. People expect a certain standard. Anna, dear, you should consider something more fitting of our family status. I tried to keep my voice steady, though I felt a sting at her words. I appreciate your concern, but I really love my dress. It's special to me. Her response was a dismissive wave. Well, it's your day, I suppose. But remember, it's not just about you, it's about how you represent us too. As the days went by, her comments became more frequent and cutting. Marin criticized the flower arrangements, the menu choices, even the invitations. Each remark was a subtle dig at my background and my inability to meet her lofty standards. Mark and I had many conversations about this, often late into the night. I can't believe she's being so difficult, Mark would say, frustration evident in his voice. 
I wish she could just see how amazing you are, how you make me happy. I would lie there, feeling his arms around me, a mix of love and sorrow in my heart. I knew it wouldn't be easy marrying into your family, but I didn't expect it to be this hard. The wedding day dawned bright and clear, a stark contrast to the turmoil churning within me. My parents and I had worked hard to make everything perfect, despite the constant criticisms from Moran, as I dressed in my simple but elegant gown. I hoped the day would pass without incident. The ceremony was beautiful, filled with love and heartfelt vows. Mark's eyes shone with affection and promise as we said our, I do. However, looming over the joyous occasion was the apprehension of the reception to follow, particularly the speeches. As expected, Marin took the microphone, her presence commanding the room's attention. The air was thick with expectation as she began to speak. Ladies and gentlemen, she started, her voice loud and clear. Today, we have gathered to witness the union of my son Mark with Anna, a person from a different circle. Whispers spread through the guests. I felt a cold shiver run down my spine. She continued, her words sharp and unyielding. While some may commend Mark for his charitable heart in lifting a beggar from the streets, we must be cautious. It's essential to keep our family's reputation and standards high, not let them be diluted by those who are clearly freeloaders, seeking to elevate their status by clinging to a family of higher standing. The room fell into a stunned silence. My parents looked at me, their faces a mix of shock and hurt. Mark's face was a mask of disbelief and anger. The guests, a mix of our friends and Mark's high society acquaintances, looked on uncomfortably, unsure of how to react. My heart sank, and a profound shame washed over me. Her words, so cruel in public, were more than just insults. They were a deliberate attempt to shame and belittle me in front of everyone we cared about. As she concluded her speech, with a forced toast to our future, the applause was hesitant and muted. The room was enveloped in an awkward silence, the joy of the occasion marred by her venomous words. Mark stood up, his voice trembling slightly. I'm sorry, Anna. This isn't what I wanted. His eyes were apologetic filled with a mix of love and sorrow. I looked around at the shocked faces of our guests, feeling incredibly humiliated. The weight of her words hung heavily in the air, casting a shadow over what was supposed to be the happiest day of our lives. The atmosphere at the reception was still tense, following the disparaging speech by Mark's mother. When his grandmother, Mrs. Eleanor, a figure of respect and authority in the family, requested the microphone. Her poised demeanor and serious expression immediately drew the attention of all the guests. Good evening, she began, her voice clear and firm. I have something important to say. Anna, you have faced unwarranted criticism today, criticism that no one deserves, especially not on their wedding day. I looked up in surprise and Mark beside me appeared equally astonished. Mrs. Eleanor then turned towards Moran. It seems we have forgotten our own past and where we come from. Let me remind everyone here, especially you, that before you were the lady of this house, you were a maid working under this very roof. It was here that you met your husband. A hush fell over the room. Mark's mother's face turned a shade paler her eyes widening in shock and embarrassment. Mrs. Eleanor continued, her tone unyielding. So, for a former maid to stand here and scorn someone for their humble beginnings and modest means is not only ironic, but deeply hypocritical. I could hardly believe what I was hearing. The room was engulfed in stunned silence every guest hanging on to Mrs. Eleanor's every word. You, who rose from poverty, should be the last person to judge or belittle another based on their background. We should be proud of Anna's integrity and strength, 
not deride her for it. The guests shifted uncomfortably, and whispers began to circulate. Myron sat motionless, the impact of Mrs. Eleanor's words evident on her face. In this family, we value character over wealth, kindness over status. Anna exemplifies these values, and I am proud to welcome her into our family. Mrs. Eleanor concluded her gaze, softening as she looked at me. The room erupted into applause, a stark contrast to the earlier muted response. Moran sat there completely humbled, her earlier arrogance replaced by a visible sense of shame. To be honest, I didn't feel sorry for her, Mark whispered to me. I never expected Grandma to stand up for us like this. I squeezed his hand, feeling a mix of relief and gratitude. She's amazing. The rest of the evening felt lighter, the air cleared by Mrs. Eleanor's candid defense. Guests approached with warm congratulations and sincere smiles. I felt that they were all on my side. It felt damn good. As we left the reception hand in hand, I felt a renewed sense of confidence and belonging. Mrs. Eleanor's words had shifted the dynamics, breaking the insidious plan of a cruel and not-so-smart woman. The days after the wedding were heavy with an unspoken tension that hung over Mark's family like a dense fog. It all came to a head during a family meeting at Mrs. Eleanor's house, where the air was thick with expectation and apprehension. As we gathered in the grand living room, Mrs. Eleanor began without preamble, her voice firm and unwavering. What happened at the wedding cannot be overlooked. The way you spoke to Anna was disgraceful. She addressed Marin directly, her eyes sharp. Mark's mother, usually so composed, looked smaller somehow, her usual confidence diminished. Eleanor, I've already apologized to Anna, she said, her voice tinged with a hint of defiance. It's not just about an apology, Mrs. Eleanor retorted. Your actions reflect on this entire family. You've become accustomed to a lifestyle funded by the family's money without appreciating its value. Mark's father nodded in agreement, his expression serious. My mother is right. You've lost sight of what's important. Mrs. Eleanor then laid out her decision each word deliberate and clear. I've decided to cut off the financial support you've been receiving. It's time you start contributing to this family instead of just taking. You'll need to find a job and learn to live within your means. The shock on Moran's face was evident. She turned to her husband, seeking support. You can't agree with this. She can't just cut me off like this. But Daniel surprised her. I stand with my mother on this. You've gone too far this time. It's for your own good. Marin's eyes filled with anger and disbelief, her usual poise crumbling under the weight of her new reality. Mark, who had been silent, spoke up, his voice steady. Mom, Grandma's decision is harsh, but it's fair. You need to understand the impact of your words and actions. I sat there watching the scene unfold feeling a mix of sympathy and relief. Mark squeezed my hand under a table, a silent show of support. The meeting ended with Mark's mother in a state of shock, the reality of her situation slowly sinking in. She was obviously used to living at the expense of her family, and all thoughts of work caused her a migraine. I could barely contain a chuckle as we left. Mark leaned in close. I never thought I'd see the day when Mom would be at a loss for words but maybe this is what she needs to change. I nodded, feeling a cautious hope for the future. Perhaps this will be a new beginning for her, for all of us. The family reckoning had been tough but necessary. It was a pivotal moment that promised to reshape the dynamics within Mark's family, hopefully for the better. The honeymoon was a welcome escape for Mark and me. As we walked along the sandy beaches, the soothing sound of the waves provided a much-needed respite from the recent family turmoil. One evening, 
As we watched the sunset, Mark wrapped his arm around me. I'm sorry our wedding turned into such a drama, Anna. I wish things had been different. I leaned into him, feeling the warmth of his embrace. It's okay, Mark. It wasn't your fault. What matters is we're together now, away from all that stress. Mark sighed, looking out over the ocean. Yeah, but when we go back, we'll have to face the reality of my mom's situation. It's going to be tough for her. I nodded, understanding his concern. Maybe this will be a chance for her to grow, to see things from a different perspective. We spend our days exploring and our nights talking about our future. The challenges we had faced seemed to strengthen our bond, reaffirming our love for each other. On our last night, as we packed our bags, Mark looked thoughtful. You know, Anna, everything that happened made me realize how important you are to me. I can't imagine going through life with anyone else. I smiled, touched by his words. I feel the same, Mark. We've been through a lot, but it's only made our relationship stronger. We can handle whatever comes our way as long as we're together. As we headed back home, I felt a sense of peace. The honeymoon had not only been a break from the chaos, but a time for us to solidify our bond, to prepare ourselves for the new chapter in our lives. We were returning to a changed reality, but we were doing it together, stronger and more united than ever. The future was uncertain, but I was ready to face it with Mark by my side. Coming back from our honeymoon, Mark and I were unsure of what awaited us at his family home. The car ride was quiet, both of us lost in our thoughts about the new family dynamics. As we arrived, the first thing we noticed was the absence of Mark's mother. Inside, we were greeted by his grandmother, Mrs. Eleanor, who wore a knowing smile. Welcome back, you two. I suppose you're wondering about the changes here, she said her tone light, but with an undercurrent of seriousness. Yes, where's mom? Mark asked, looking around. Mrs. Eleanor took a deep breath, her smile still in place. Well, after you left, Marin caused quite a scene. She demanded that I restore her financial support. When I refused, she decided to leave. She's now living in a small apartment, and from what I hear is looking for a job. Mark and I exchanged glances, the news sinking in. It was a drastic change from the luxurious life she was used to. And there's more, Mrs. Eleanor continued, leaning in as if to share a secret. Your father is considering a divorce. He's had enough of her antics. Seems like she finally pushed him too far. Well, she brought it upon herself, Mark said his expression one of shock, mixed with a hint of relief. I can't believe it, I said. I mean, I knew things would change, but this is more than I expected. I reached out, touching his arm. It's a lot to take in, but maybe this is for the best, a chance for everyone to start fresh on a more honest footing. Dinner that night was an oddly serene affair. The absence of Mark's mother was felt, but not in the way we had anticipated. The conversation was more open, and for the first time in a long time, it felt like there was a real sense of family. As we drove home later that evening, Mark was pensive. I always hoped for a change, but I didn't expect it to happen like this. It's going to be a big adjustment for Mom. I nodded. It's a tough situation, but maybe it's a necessary step for her to grow and for your dad, too, to find some peace. The ride home was reflective, both of us contemplating the new reality we were returning to. The family we left before the honeymoon was not the same one we were coming back to. It was a sobering thought, but, in many ways, a hopeful one. Change, though painful at times, was often the path to something better, and we were ready to face it together.